If you'll notice, I'm finishing with only one arm. I tap people in class all the time with just one arm. And the idea is, if I truly believe this is a dominant position, which I do, that means I should not have to have a massive amount of effort you know, expended to finish this. If there's a vein popping out of my forehead, something is going wrong. Or at the very least, I could be doing things a little bit more efficiently. So even if Seth is resisting a little bit, I should still be able to finish him. Particularly if he's a little bit less experienced than me, all I care about, guys, is getting down the mechanics of this movement. So here we are, arm under the head, forearm flush to the mat. My bicep is one side of the triangle. My fore, or rather, my collarbone is catching him right here, and I'm going to rotate that into the side of his neck, and I project my chest, flex my bicep on the other side, and we'll get the finish. Now. There's a number of ways this can be executed, guys. You want to make sure that your pressure is not going laterally. Not, it's not on the same parallel line as your opponent. I want to be turning the corner. And that means I'm going to bring my chest forward. I can accomplish the same thing. If you'll notice, my head is coming up, but my chest is now the driving force in this choke. Seth wants to turn to face me. I hold the lever of his bicep, and I can hold his shoulder. So which way do you have to turn, Seth? Are you sure? Yes. Can you please turn to your left side? It's impossible. It's literally impossible. And Seth's about the same size as me, so I know that for sure. So he turns away. And I say, hi. Huh. There's my Ezekiel. There's my back attack, if you got the back attack series. Shameless self you know, plug there. But if we come back, <clears throat> let's say I'm like, no, nah, I want to I wanna finish with the Katagatami. So what I'll do is I'll put all of my weight here. Can you turn that way, please? Nowhere. Right. My weight doesn't always have to be on his stomach. I can put it on one shoulder or the other. He pushes me away. It doesn't really matter. If I want the katagatami, guys, I can start to think about, all right, katagatami, his arm eventually needs to be up here. So I'll hold this down, but I'll just manage his bicep. So if he turned to face me, as he does, I kind of guide his arm. And I catch. When we're here, I'm going to use this to drive him onto his side because I can say to myself, hey, well, which arm triangle do I want to hit? Well, right now, I'm like, oh, man, I love Katagatami. If I latch that thing on, I feel like I'm going to get anybody. But the problem is I don't give myself a lot of room for error because as I swing through, maybe his arm can drop. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start, I'm going to roll Seth up onto his side. All I did was lean my weight behind his arm. And I say, look, man, if you want to stay here and not move, I'm going to Kimura you. If you want to continue to roll over, I'll go to your back. Alternatively, if he continues to roll over, going please I say all right no problem bravo or if we come back Seth continues to turn over I say all right keep on going please no problem bravo we can catch either arm but right now I say all right I don't feel quite as comfortable with the overhooking uh, type finish positions right now maybe my arms are a little bit shorter Seth's kind of a lankier guy or maybe he's a stockier guy and I'm a stockier guy as well all right, so what we're going to do instead is I roll Seth up onto his side, at which point I say, wait a second, I'm dominating the hand fighting here. This is fantastic. I let my arm go through, making sure not to leave space under my elbow for Seth's arm to come through or for Seth's other arm to support. Right. This goes all the way tight, and I immediately think to attack Ezekiel. Seth, recognizing the danger from the Ezekiel and saying, hey, I've already had my guard passed. What do I really care? Drops to his back. and we get the easy finish. Here we are in the Katagatami. I'm pretty sure I was gonna finish him, but Seth turns away. Only this time, I don't have the luxury of grabbing my sleeve because it's Nogi. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna lock my, I'm gonna lock my figure four grip, just like a rear naked choke. Now the common error here, guys, is to stay on your knees because what you're gonna notice is that when you lock your figure four grip, you're gonna have a sharp bite against the side of their neck down here, and you're gonna have nothing on top. And the urge is to squeeze your balls off. Generally speaking, the people who do this are really, really strong and have no technique. I want you guys to be able to do this, have excellent technique, and then also be strong. So here we are, and I lock my grip here. And if I squeeze really hard, probably nothing's going to happen. The only thing that might happen is I might hurt his neck a little bit, like I might give him a pinch nerve. If you expand your chest, Seth, it doesn't quite feel right. What I'm going to do once I lock my grip is I'm going to sit behind him, not sit down like this but I'm gonna to drop to my hip. So, if we come back again, Seth turns away. As he's turning away, I recognize the position change, and I sit. What this does is, if you notice, where's my shoulder? If you bring your arm down a little, Seth, 
It's right behind his, just like in every other application of these arm triangles, guys. My shoulder is right behind his. So now even if I just lock my hands, I can still get the finish. If Seth's near shoulder, if Seth turns away, his near shoulder comes up. Boom, okay. I can stop that by putting pressure down here or by lifting this here. Can you turn away, please, Seth? No. No, and again, that has nothing to do with skill. You get me Marcelo Garcia, who's obviously better than me, and I'll have the same effect. If Seth turns to face me, the far shoulder comes up. I can block that shoulder, or if Seth turns to face me, I can lift the near arm or the near shoulder. Or if I had enough, you turn to face me, if I got a belt, I could lift the near hip, which is usually a little bit more difficult. So what I want you guys to think is, depend, based on what you want the other guy to do, you should close down his options. If I'm controlling you well, I don't control all your options, but I control certain ones. So right now, Seth, can you turn either direction? Yes, he can go towards me. Yes, he can go away from me. I'm not controlling this very well. What I want to do is I want to say, all right, I want the Ezekiel. When I control, I'll let his arm through. And here's the thing, guys. These aren't moves right now. These are ideas that are going to be able to, I'm not doing your work for you, but I'm giving you something that's going to, to last you a hell of a lot longer than whatever latest setup I happen to be hitting in class or in competition. Can you turn to face me, please, Seth? No. No, the reason is, is because I'm holding down this shoulder. Can you turn away? Ezekiel. If he turns back out of the danger of the Ezekiel, arm triangle. Flat to the ground, angled across him, staring at his shoulder, keeping him right in front of me. So if I were firing a gun, I'm looking right at him. This arm is now extremely vulnerable. I'm going to take my left arm. I can grip his lapel, or I can grip underneath. Now, rather than gripping the lapel a lot of times, because, you know, at least for, for me, I mean, it's great to use the gi a lot, of course, but I try not to let it handicap me. I don't want to, I don't want to get too used to holding on, too used to the friction that might not be there without the gi on. So I'm going to grip, and I'm going to control his bottom shoulder. I want you to slide that away from me, please, Chef. Watch this. If I'm up here, see how his bottom shoulder sneaks out? You can start to build base. Exactly. I'm like, uh-oh, that's the beginning of the end for me. So I say, nope, I'll have that. And I stay here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to lean nice and easy. My hips are still projecting into his knee, and I pressure down on his shoulder. If Seth wants to try to push me away, I say, sure. And the same motion that I use to defeat his legs, I'm going to use to defeat his arm. Once here, I immediately look to connect my head to his head and touch the floor. If I can't touch his head, that's fine. But I'm still seeking that. That's what's in my mind. Because if we're here, can you loop your arm out, please, Seth? Oh, plenty of space. How about now? Uh -uh. But the problem now is that I'm light, so I'll drive to the floor. And I get ready to surf back over my opponent into a position where I have my arm triangle. So if I want to further pare down my opponent's ability to turn to face me, control one shoulder. If you control it, you know for a fact I must go in that same direction. Whichever shoulder I hold on to, he has to turn that way. So if Seth's behind, let's say he's got his hooks underneath my feet. So here we are, and I'm like, crap, I want to turn to face. If he holds my left shoulder, I can't go to the right. I have to go left, and he's ready. If he holds my right shoulder, I'm like, Ugh. So when I try to turn to face him, he's already ready to hit me with katagatama. Right, so I've got my side-to-side -side lateral movements, moving one way, moving the other. Seth commits towards me. I can move to the other side. Seth commits again. I slide my bravo. I spin around his head. Seth commits again. I can duck and look for my arm triangle. I'll let him out of the arm triangle. I can duck out of the other way. I'll let him turn.